Hello and welcome fans and friends, my name is Super 8 Bit Ben, and today I'm going to introduce a new thing to the channel and this is this pair of weird glasses. Now, straight from the bat I just want to tell you these are called Shemion glasses, uh, you can look them up. Um, they're pretty unique where you can actually design the dot matrix that's actually on these things and they, these aren't cheap exactly but they are pretty cool to bring to a party and stuff like that so I'm not quite sure why I got it, I just thought it was like the coolest thing at the time and I haven't used them since. So I thought, hey, this channel needs a bit of personality and I might as well use something like this to bring a bit of uniqueness to the channel. So without further ado, we're going to move on to finish off what I started yesterday, which was my original Game Boy game collection. So without further ado, we're just going to go straight to the game footage and my commentary. Okay, so to start with, here's another sequel I didn't know about, but to me, I don't think this is really a true sequel to my beloved Super Mario Land series. Um, recently, I did do a video saying that this game basically killed off the, the amazing Super Mario Land series, but Wario has his own good games in his own respect, but like, eh. I wish he hadn't taken over Super Mario Land so quickly, um, I mean he was the main bad guy in the second game and all, but to have his own game series straight after that, I just don't feel right about it. But I guess it helped develop some of the Wario character, which barely anyone really cares about nowadays, to be honest with you. Like, I'm pretty sure there's not many real Wario fans out there, so... But f for those that actually are big fans of Wario, you should probably play this game. Um, there's a similar game on the Virtual Boy, which um, I do highly recommend a lot more in this game. There's just something about that one that has a bit more personality to it. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to end it there. Okay, so here we have not one of my first Pokemon games I ever played. To be honest with you, I actually played Pokemon Pearl before this, which was my first Pokemon game, but... Um, I had a lot of fun playing this one, it's Pokemon Yellow, which is like the special edition of Blue and Red, and I guess Green that came out over in Japan. Um, this is actually like the special edition which had some aspects from the anime, from the Indigo League anime, and I had a lot of good fun playing this game, as you can see, I spent about like 38 hours or so, I think I took that out of the footage, but I spent about 38 hours playing this game and like you look at the graphics and it's very basic but there's just some kind of charm to it as with every other Game Boy game about the graphics and the color scheme and it has a nice Game Boy player border thingy like the Super Game Boy player border so yeah there's that. Um, definitely worth a play if you can get your hands on it. I either recommend Pokemon Yellow, Blue or Red. Um, I play for yellow and uh, yeah. This one to be frank I didn't have that much patience to play for it much to make footage but it is a Bomberman game and I haven't been a huge fan of that series but maybe someday I'll get into it through this game. This is Wario Blast. I mean this is already a Bomberman game with Wario slapped on it and I don't get why Wario was so popular back then but I guess they thought that he would be a good choice for Bomberman Blast and I guess that's where the origin of him using bombs came from in like games like Mario Tennis. Um, I haven't really played that much of this but it has an interesting Game Boy, Super Game Boy order. Um, that's all really I could say about it. It's, it's an okay game, I think there's multiplayer in it. Pretty sure there is, if not, it's pretty bland but I'm probably just going to end it there because I haven't really got that much to really say about it, but it was an interesting looking game and a nice little border. This is a bit of an odd one, but it's Conker's Pocket Tales. Yay! But seriously, like you think from the lineage of Conker's Bad Fur Day, this would be at least a decent game, but well. From the get-go you just kind of know that's going to be a really bad game because the music just repeats over and over again. What the flip is that face? But uh, yeah, um, this is like a top-down adventure game I guess. You have to go around collecting presents and conquers and stuff like that and it just really isn't that interesting at all. It has such a bland colour scheme to it and I really shouldn't have picked this up but it was basically just a bit of waste of money. It wasn't like really expensive like Conquer's Bad Fur Day is. But, like, 
I think this may have came before or after Conqueror's Bad Fur Day. I'm not sure when this came out, but this was back when he was going to be an innocent, you know, child-friendly character. And it's just an interesting bit of rare history, quite literally. So yeah, um, yeah, green color scheme, very uninteresting. The music's horrible. Um, just very uninteresting gameplay. The only thing that is interesting is how fluent uh, like Conqueror's running animation is. Like that's pretty impressive, but. There isn't really that much else to say about this. Um, I don't think I ever get around. I don't even want to play this game ever, really. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> this game easily has like my favorite border for any game, and that is Pokemon Pinball, uh, which was a nice surprise whenever I popped this in and discovered it actually had a Super Game Boy border, which is really really cool. But something seems off about the colors for the game itself. Well, it could be just me, but. Yeah, I was having a bit of trouble figuring out how to push the ball there, but this is a really cool little game and what's actually unique about the cartridge itself is it has a rumble pack built in, but of course it's actually powered by a AAA battery and, well, and mine didn't actually come with a cover on it so I would actually have to hold it down with like a, you know, a bit of tape or something like that, but very unique little game and if, again if you like pinball, there's a couple of pinball games on the Game Boy, this is probably highly recommended. Um, there was like a sequel to this game made on the Game Boy Advance, and I actually used to have a game, a micro Game Boy, I forget what we call them, I think it was Game Boy Micro, no it's not a Game Boy Micro, it was some kind of tiny Game Boy that had like a version of Pokemon Pinball, um, that was also thrown out by my stepdad I believe, or maybe just eventually broke. But uh, if I find out the name of that thing again, I'll, I'll, I'll probably put a caption here, or maybe not. I don't know. But yeah, definitely check this out. It's an interesting little game if you can pick it up. It's not that dear. If you've never played a Dr. Mario game before, you should definitely pick up uh, any version of Dr. Mario. It's such a classic series. Um, it's very much like Tetris and Puyo Puyo, of course. But um, I think the last Dr. Mario game came out on the Wii U and 3DS. Um, there's been quite a lot of games in this particular series, and I really do like the Game Boy version. Um, I have like the Game Boy Advance version, which is like the NES port, and I think the music in that one sounds slightly better, but you can't really go wrong with any version of Dr. Mario, and if you ever do come across this game, it's very replayable, and I can never get this uh, version of uh, Do the Dr. Mario song by Brentle Floss. I can never get that out of my head now. And every time I hear this song, it will always remind me of that, so, um... Okay, so we have Game & Watch Gallery 2. I don't have number one, but I will say that this one's much better than the third one, which is kind of weird to say. You think the third one would be better, but, um, this, I believe, has both versions of, uh, the Game & Watch titles. You have, like, these modern takes on each Game & Watch title, and here we have, of course, Donkey Kong, which Pretty unique take on Donkey Kong the series. Uh, it's pretty fun. It's a little bit difficult, but yeah. Uh, move on to Vermin. Um, this is one where you have to whack um, a bunch of vermin uh, before they steal your eggs or break your eggs, and uh, basically do it for as long as possible. The whole point of Game Watch is so that you can go on for as long as possible. Here we have Ball, which I did absolutely horribly on. Um, it just plays so differently to the, the Game & Watch version that I just really couldn't get used to it. It could be just the aesthetic that put me off, but you could always play the original version anyway. Next we have Helmet, which is one of the more enjoyable titles. Um, basically you have to run to the switch and press it so you can move on to the next stage. And here we have Parachute, where you have to catch all the falling um, friend, friends and stuff of Mario. Um, he, he goes around his boat to catch them before the fish eats them, of course. And they will sometimes go into this cannon and be shot over. So we here we have Game & Watch Gallery 3, which I just mentioned. Um, you'll see in a moment why I don't think it is it's, it's as good. Um, uh, I think it has more bland colour palette, but does kind of look better graphics-wise. Like, if I had more colour scheme, I think it would look a lot better, maybe a better game in the end, but... Um, here we have Egg, where Yoshi has to eat eggs, or, sorry, cookies. <laughs> he doesn't eat eggs. Yeah, he eats cookies, and, uh, yeah, he has to try to eat them before they fall. Here we have Greenhouse. 
which um, I think I accidentally selected the Game & Watch version but you can see me demonstrating how to play that game, I have no idea how to play it but eh, I think you have to like, spray pesticides on bugs and stuff in that one. I'm sorry if I don't give enough coverage in certain games here, just there's not all that many I feel super motivated to really talk about but you get the general gist of what each game contains. Here we have um, Mario Land 2 which is where the series started to kind of deviate from the Super Mario Land gameplay because I think this is the one where he has to like run to the beginning of the stage after he collects something. Um, I'm probably wrong about that but I didn't like that sort of style of gameplay from the later games so I think this was just a normal 2D platformer and it has improved graphics and well, it just kind of looks a bit more bland uh, other than that. Like it has this sort of green colour scheme like normal Game Boy games do. Um, I don't get why the one before that looked a little bit better in my opinion. Like even though the pixel art is a lot better in this one. Um, there are some unique aspects to this such as, uh, as you can see, Wario inflating because he kind of has an allergic reaction to bees. And that makes him inflate and fly which is pretty hilarious. But um, Funny enough, I just recently got Wario Land 4 for the GBA, so I might get around to playing this one again someday, but I'm kind of lost in this level and I'm clearly not playing in the right direction here, so yeah, um, just want to give us a big, bit of coverage. Okay, so last but certainly not least, we have Nintendo and Capcom's The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons, I believe. Um, now, in a moment, you'll notice that there's going to be some glitchy graphics because the Retron 5 doesn't quite play Game Boy Color games properly sometimes. Um, <laughs> what is with Link there? I think he's done some really bad crack or something, but um, this is really funny part where he kind of looks at the castle and it's super glitchy looking, like there you go. Um, Retron really need to work on that, but this game is pretty decent. Uh, very colourful, probably the most impressive looking game on the original Game Boy Color. Uh, I'm going to count Game Boy Color as original Game Boy because it kind of was from the same time. Um, I know it's kind of like evolution of the Game Boy but I really don't have enough uh, Game Boy Color games to really make that its own video. But this is an interesting game, I um, haven't got around to really playing it. And again the Retron 5 doesn't fully render it properly so I'm going to probably play this on my GameCube Game Boy Player instead, even though I'd rather play it in like HD of 720p graphics. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to end it there guys. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already seen part 1, do you certainly check it out. There's plenty of interesting games, including games I grew up with in my childhood. If you enjoyed my commentary here, then don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and also share if you really don't mind. I, I really need people to start sharing my videos because uh, I don't get that many views so yeah um, I'm just going to end on an awkward note here but uh, thanks for watching guys again leave any comments and memories if you have any in the section below